Hello everybody, Lumitron here. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to design a cyclotron drive in Fusion 360. We're going to be using two parametric equations that are referenced from this document here by Omar Yunus. Building a cyclotron drive with SOLIDWORKS. The link to this PDF is in the description below if you guys want to check it out. So these are the two parametric equations that we will be using. They're taken straight from the PDF file that I showed you just now. And one thing we're going to have to change to use this in Fusion 360, uh, it's the arc 10. Um, for some reason, Fusion doesn't use arc 10, they just use A10. And here I laid out a brief description of what each of the variables mean. So R is the radius of the roller, E is the eccentricity offset, R sub R is the radius of the rollers, and N is the number of the rollers. As an example, I show this arbitrary parameters where I got the radius of the rotor as 40 millimeters, the eccentricity as 3 millimeters, the radius of the rollers as 8 millimeters, and the number of rollers as 10. Um, I did the conversion here just to make life easier. And um, then we can see here the two equations that we just saw pre previously. And all I did is just change the values for each of the variables in the equation so that I can just copy and paste this equation um, in the plugin that we will see now. So to use these parametric equations in Fusion 360, we're going to have to add in a plugin called Equation Driven Curve. We can download this from the add-ins and go into Fusion 360 App Store and search for Equation Driven Curve. There's that first one there. As you can see it's free and it provides a bit of the documentation and information regarding it and there's a bunch of questions that people ask and stuff once you download it you can find it uh, by going and doing a sketch then going in the drop down and you can find it as equation driven curve once you hit that you'll be faced with this window where you're going to be using the coordinate system that's cartesian and you can substitute the equations for whatever numbers you want. I'm just going to be using the ones we spoke before. And one thing I would like to note here is to remember that um, this plugin only reads centimeters for some reason. Whenever you write the radiuses for the rollers and the rotor, um, remember to convert it to centimeters before you input them here. And also the NT value. Uh, make it a little bit over 2 pi so that the um, curve is completed. And I will show you real quick what I mean by that. And as you can see here, this point is the initial point where the equation starts out and goes down and goes and does the 360. And so to make this blue and defined, uh, you're going to want to have it a little bit over so that it connects with the actual curve. So once you have this, you can go on and make it a solid and extrude it. And so the component here, and let's make it, uh, let's say like 0.3 centimeters. To do the rollers, um, let's do another sketch here. And remember that uh, we had said that the radius of the rotor is going to be four centimeters. So we want to have the actual radius of the uh, gear drive to be the diameter that's eight centimeters. So now we can do the rollers at that distance 
and the distance we had for the rollers was a radius of 0.8 centimeters so we're going to want to have it as 1.6 centimeters there we go and we'll just change this back to an actual curve now let's define this real quick and so we also said that we needed 10 rollers and uh, let's just do a quick pattern here get the center and let's get the alrighty and you can see that the gears are hitting but it's because now we just need to apply the move this to the eccentricity distance and let's just first do the solids of this real quick let's do the same point three and not join the new component that's really okay and so now let's just move the cyclotal gear to its eccentricity, which we had said it would be uh, 0.3 centimeters. So move that 0.3. Mm. There we go. It's all meshed up. Every tooth is hitting there again. And if you want to have a little bit more clearance then you can play around with the eccentricity by making it less or playing around with the different diameters um, so that you can have a little bit more clearance because I know that when you do this in a 3D printed um, it will mesh pretty tightly so you want to play around with that okay everybody thanks for watching I hope this gives you another way of making a cyclotal drive I know there's tons of ways of doing it but I found this way to be pretty simple um, once you get the hang of it. Um, let me know what I can do differently to make this more understandable in the comments below. And thanks for watching.